there are a lot of Democrats who right. support this bill, who support Sherrod Brown, who love the fact that David Vitter has signed on to a bipartisan bill, the likes of which maybe we've never seen. Well, I, uh, I think it's why, silly. To, why is it silly? Because if you put, if you label something as, as a bipartisan, because you can find one Republican and one Democrat to support a bad idea, it doesn't make it better. Uh, but isn't that what we need? What is the bad idea? The bad idea is having lower capital requirements for the regional banks, which historically are riskier than the larger banks. You go back to the SNL crisis and the Great Depression. It was the regional banks that brought the system down. Why would you do two things? Have a difference in capital between the big banks and the regional banks and scrap Basel III? Which has been worked on now for years uh -huh. and years to come up with what I think are some sensible approaches. Well, it's great for your business. The more regulation we have, let's be honest. Not really. I make my money off of lending. I make my money off of lending transactions. Okay, but the point is, let's go back. We're going to look back and say, what the hell were we thinking about when we did Dodd Frank? What? Y yes, I okay. agree. With that. Okay. What there the certain hell? aspects of that? Certainly, Volcker rule. We're Guess what? Mm -hmm. Look, look. The the banks proved. That the system works. Yes, I agree with that. Okay. And, and the Fed and. How, and, and hang on a second. How exactly did the banks prove that the system works? And we're going to agree on this. The, the guys that ran themselves well are still around, and the guy, it's capitalism. And, and when there was yes, a problem. Yes, but the taxpayers okay, had to pay and bail everybody that's out. Set, when that's, there was a problem. When yeah. there was a problem. And, it was, and there was a problem. Oh, yes. Uh, the, I think we can agree on We can all agree on that. Much. The Secretary no, of the Treasury. Agree on that for one reason. The Secretary of the Treasury and, and the Chairman of the Fed. Could make, t could make half a dozen calls and get in one room a majority of the deposits in the banking system. And they can say, like, like, like long term not, capital management. Whether you like it or not, you're taking the, the tarp because no one's going to have their head uh, above the parapet. We're not going to have more problems. Right. Goldman and JP Morgan didn't want the money That's and right. they didn't need the money. Correct. And they were told, Paulson, did Jay, right, exactly. Paulson said, no, no, you're not going to have that advantage competitively. You're not going to be able to go brag we didn't need the money like Ford Motor Company did. That's right. Okay? Let me tell you something. This was, and by the, let's understand something. This happened under a, re, a Republican administration. Right. George Bush was president and Hank Paulson was secretary of the treasury. I don't get this that you're saying, well, everybody else is sick and dying of cancer and we're going to give you the same, same chemotherapy we were giving them because you're going to go around and tell people, hey, I'm healthy. I'm going to be okay. I mean, the, the logic. Well, I think by the way, I'm glad, by the way, I'm glad Paulson won his argument. I own a lot of the J.P. Morgan tarp warrants. <laughs> I'm being honest with you, and I'm a big investor right. in J.P. Also with the Wells Fargo. These are banks. But we, we can agree on this, Ken. If, 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 <coughs> if, you, if, you had, if you had broken up the banks and what you had was 100 small banks. You'd have more trouble. You'd have much more trouble. Absolutely. You could not have that meeting that solved the issue. Look at, look at what happened back with the SNLs in the late 80s. Or the Great Depression before but that. But I'm talking about more recently, you know, where did Resolution Trust come That's from? Right. A lot of people that didn't know risk. So the big argument that you're making, Paul, is that we shouldn't He's treat small banks. Too, for Christ <laughs> shouldn't treat <laughs> large banks and small banks differently from each other. So right. if, you, if you could have your, if you Perhaps, could have your I think way, you could make an argument that the larger banks are more diversified. I think they're better managed. Right. You could argue but, they need less of a capital cushion, but certainly not the other way but around. But the whole idea of too big to fail is that they're so large that they could bring down our economy, and then this taxpayer. But 2008 has since proved that that isn't really that huge of a risk. Isn't that huge of a risk? We yeah. wouldn't we wouldn't be it's where we are today with the Fed on trillions of, with trillions of dollars on its balance sheet, with the European government, uh, the European Central Bank having to put LTRO in place, uh, with the European economy still flat on its back. If I but mean, I, I think some people would argue that we wouldn't start, be here no, if that didn't no. happen. You have to start from the premise that there will be banking bubbles and 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 and, and credit bubbles throughout history. History has you're never going to stop that. You're never going to stop. We that. shouldn't be trying to mitigate. No, because guess what? The halo effect is alive and well in banks. Right. Let me tell you something. The one thing I know every single morning when I wake up, every single morning, that whatever I'm involved in, it's entirely possible that if I do some stupid things or make some bad decisions. I can go broke. Right. That's a powerful force to be reasonable and rational. Right. I think, I think, well, last year, you know what that did for me? It proved to me what a great bank yes. Jamie runs. He Absolutely. still had record earnings. Absolutely. What the? I, know, Absolutely. I can say it. They can't. It, it, what, Jamie Dimon was 100% right. It was a tempest in a teapot. It was a media he event. Yeah, but now he's being political punished. So he's not saying that. I'm saying 
These guys ought to worry about important things. That right. loss, they proved in the context of a blunder. Here's the mistake that Bush made. You he sure you're do... not a Republican? Now, come he... on. He'll throw a he coming out do... party for you. He didn't do it. I guess this, this is, this is a good process. Well, no, no, this is you're road. in. I'm getting to the I got 21 two Club. You can have a party. Hey, Conver conversion, conversion on the road to Damascus <laughs> happening right here on the set of Market Makers. You want to know why? Because Republicans preach common sense. That's why. And they're agreeing with it. The, the mistake that Bush made was not doing what Roosevelt did when he bailed out the banks, which is to have a fireside chat or press conference every week explaining right. why you're doing it. Right. You did not have a public relations campaign right. that made it effective and understandable by the common man. And that by the way, the economics was not George Bush's strong suit. Right. And but, you, you mentioned J.P. Morgan, and you were talking. You were, you were praising Jamie Dimon. I love Jamie. So does that mean As that a person? I know him well personally. I love him, and he's he's probably the finest CEO across any business in America. In the, so should the world. he be able to keep his role as as CEO and chairman? Absolutely not. This is nuts. Oh, no, no, you, you think, wait, 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 wait. He, he should be both, or should he, he should be both? I yeah. agree with that. Let me tell you something. Go to Europe where they'd split them up. Yeah, it's a disaster. Well, no, not only that. Where are the results? Yep. Where are the economic results? By the way, this whole nonsense of governance is a lot of horse feathers to me. I want guys on my board, or a woman on my board, that's going to hold me accountable for cost, market growth, treating our people right, taking care of our responsibilities in a society. But how do you hold yourself accountable? If you're the chairman and the CEO at the same time, I don't have to. I got nine people in a room, or seven or five, whatever the number is, that they'll fire me. Right. If I do the wrong thing, the problem you got is, here's a dark secret. We're paying directors today so much money in America, they're not independent anymore. Ah, now there's a, there's a good, now, go how much the, should they be paid, into, Ken? How much should a director be paid? You can't pay him enough money. You, you can't, can't for the responsibility, you, I'm not saying, that, see, first of all, I'm a serial overpayer. Ask Elliot Spitzer, that's why he came after me, okay? <laughs> now, by the way, I, I won, I want you to know that. I beat him bad, okay? Look, look. <laughs> It's not a question of how much you pay them, it's a question of their motives. I believe every single director, if they sign on, doesn't get any money. The money you agree to pay them goes towards buying stock until they have a certain amount of money invested in that company, they get no cash fees out of it. What, what do you I think it's an interesting idea. Hold it. I, I have a policy, which by the way has worked wonderfully for me. I didn't go, I wouldn't go on a board unless I was willing to invest a certain amount of money. Thank God I did. Look at Yum Brands. Right. One of my best investments in 15 years. And it worked out. Same with Jamie. When Jamie went on the board with me, we went on the Yum well, together. He bought a right. lot of stock. Richard, do you agree with Ken on the idea of corporate governance that they should be okay with the CEO and chairman role? In, in that case, yes. Yeah, I, I don't think there's any magic between having the chairman and the CEO ah. be separate. I, I, I don't see the magic in that. Look, let me tell you something. Who would you argue today, forget about controversy, who is the best run bank in America today? My clients, all of them. Well, I, don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I, that's an unfair question I've asked right. you. Certainly, you'd have to say J.P. Morgan. Certainly up there. And yeah. Wells Fargo. Yeah. Okay. I think they're the yeah. two. Well, they're right. the biggest. I would also argue, um, uh, look at look at major American corporations. Look at Exxon. Yeah. Is it coincidental that they didn't play around with these socially correct? You know, we're talking about right. diversity. Let me get another pitch in. It's all wonderful. Everybody wants diversity, and I'm all for it. But let's make sure in our universities we have intellectual diversity, so yeah. we teach our kids how to think. Yeah and consider both sides of an argument, not one. But that's, that's that little pitch. But let me go back. How do you explain how well run? Frank Blake is the chairman and CEO of Home Depot. I don't think there's anybody in America today that wouldn't argue that Frank Blake arguably is the best CEO and chairman in all the well, retail. Well, look, and you also have audit committees of and course compensation do. committees that are majority. It's when they don't do their work. It's when they don't do their work. That's where the problem is. Look. Yeah. The best compliment I ever got when I was on a corporate board, no, un, unnamed, and the chairman came to me and said, you know why I like you on my board? I said, why? He said, I know if I screw up, you'll have no trouble raising your hand and saying I should be fired. Okay, well, that's you, Ken. What about all the other directors? Well, if you haven't got that courage, you shouldn't be on the board. You have no prayer to begin with. Your, that's your biggest job. Your biggest single job is saying, do we have the right guy yeah, or the right gal? Ken, the problem is many if not most directors on corporate boards in America aren't Ken Langone. No, oh, right? we I mean, no, no, we've right. now applied, we've now applied social engineering. 
Hang you on know, a second. The, the shareholders vote the directors in. So what? They have a practical got a choice. matter. Get though. out of here. They Whoever give you goes before the they have no they have, they have, Why do they have no choice? Well, they have no practical. choice because the management decides what the slate of you know, directors is. You know all these, all these state funds? The CEO That's true. might also be the chairman. You know all okay. these, oh, hang on. By the way, we're about to go into overtime, so I want you to know right now, you know. I guess you got to score we're a goal. Going to a high, look, look. These state funds are all, they're now, by the way, I made the hit list because I'm on something called Students First. And the, I saw that in the paper the other day. Yeah, that's I wear that as a badge of honor. Why am I for students first? Because education is all about educating kids, not the teachers. But let me say something. The measure by which you pick somebody to run your money should be how well they do with that money, assuming they do everything no honorably and ethically. Correct. Okay? So the fact that they've got this hot list, this black list, whatever the hell you want to call it, that, the fact that they've got that, Maybe the very best manager in America. But one of the guys on the list is Paul, is Paul Singer. Sure. Mm -hmm. He manages money for me. Yep. Fabulous. Okay? And he does it ethically, and he does it honorably, and he does it right in front of everybody. Go R ahead. Richard, make your final point here that you were going to say. Bipartisanship. I guess what, 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 no, we, what we I criticized at the I'm beginning of the we now see how it can work. Richard, I'm going to have you at the same party I have the mayor for. Terrific. For coming out, okay? Excellent. All right.